Hi, I'm Tom, and in this video I'm going to talk about how I finished my priority domestic hot water setup on my existing S-Plant heating system. Now, I won't go into the details of priority domestic hot water in this video, but in a nutshell, priority domestic hot water is designed for heating systems that have a hot water cylinder, and it allows your boiler to deliver two different flow temperatures depending on what it's doing. You'll have one flow temperature when it's heating the water in your cylinder, and one flow temperature when it's heating your house. And why would you want a different flow temperature when you're heating your house? Well, your house doesn't always need the same amount of heat. So here in the Midlands, in the winter, the temperatures can range from as low as minus five degrees to maybe as warm as plus 12 degrees. And when it's plus 12 outside, your house doesn't need as much heat to keep it warm as it does when it's minus five. To ensure that your boiler is only supplying the exact amount of heat that you need there's a feature called weather compensation that's pretty common in most boilers and what that will do is based on the temperature outside it will deliver a different flow temperature inside your house so that's keeping your house nice and cozy but only using the minimum amount of heat but for boilers that can only deliver one fixed flow temperature this can be a problem because it means that if you lower the flow temperature for your heating, you may struggle to heat the hot water in your cylinder. And this is why priority domestic hot water is so, so important, because it unlocks weather compensation. If you want to know more about weather compensation, there's plenty of stuff on the web. And if you've got a specific question, just drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it for you. So coming back to my setup, I had my heating system installed in 2021 when this house was renovated and back then I didn't know about flow temperatures and heat loss, never mind priority domestic hot water and weather compensation. After a massive gas bill shock winter of that year, I started trying to understand more about my boiler and how it behaved and that started me on a journey towards lower flow temperatures and weather compensation. I realized that the priority domestic hot water then was the key to unlocking weather compensation. So in 2022, uh, after I'd paid off my massive gas bill for that winter, I started digging into my boiler's uh, specifications a little bit more, and I realized that it actually did support uh, the two flow temperatures. So it had support for priority domestic hot water. Unfortunately, it doesn't do that out of the box. Now, I don't know why it doesn't do it out of the box, but it doesn't do it out of the box. And you need to actually add something called a diverter valve into the setup. And that requires a little bit of replumbing to make that work. I reached out to Worcester Bosch to find out more about what I could do to get that enabled. And I contacted four different engineers that were listed on the Worcester Bosch website. Three of them had no idea what I was talking about. They'd never heard of a diverter valve. They'd never heard of priority domestic hot water for that matter. And the one engineer that I did speak to knew what the diverter valve was, had no idea why I would want to get one installed, and then quoted me about 500 quid to get that work done. Now at that stage I'd already decided I wanted to get an air source heat pump and I wanted to rip that boiler off my wall so I didn't really fancy spending another 500 quid to rectify this problem so I started looking around for an alternative solution. So I ended up getting an EMS gateway from a company in the Netherlands and that's a little doodad that connects directly into the digital interface of the boiler. Now I've done a video on that earlier in the year uh, showing you how that connects and how it surfaces that information and that's been really useful it kind of gives me an insight into what the boiler is doing but using that little gadget combined with a Shelly i3 I was able to create an automation that would essentially increase the boiler's flow temperature when a call for heat came from my cylinder. Now that worked really well, but it always kind of bothered me that the boiler wasn't doing this by itself, even though it had the capability to do it. So that never really sat well with me. Then in March 2023, uh, Richard Burrows of the Mid Wales Plumbing and Heating Supplies showed me a trick that I could use to enable that mode 
on the boiler. The trick involved adding a single 10k resistor into the boiler and I recorded a video of that as I was doing it at the time and I recommend you watched it as I'm rendered completely speechless at the end. That little trick worked really well and it meant that I could remove the automations from my setup but I was left with one more problem to solve. And to help me explain what that problem is I've created a little diagram of my heating system which looks like this. So this is a typical S-plan heating system. So over here we've got our boiler. Uh, this little squiggle here represents the coil inside the hot water cylinder and that's got a two port zone valve on it. And then down here we just have a couple of radiators. There's obviously a lot more in my house but I've just put three in for example. And then there's another zone valve that controls those. So essentially what happens is when the thermostat calls for heat, the boiler will open this little zone valve, sets its flow temperature to 40 to 40 degrees in my case, and that starts circulating the water around the radiators at 40 degrees. If we then need to boost the hot water, we'll start calling for hot water. The boiler will increase its flow temperature to 70 degrees, and that water will circulate around the coil and heat the water. So far, so good. The problem arises when this happens. So let's say the heating comes on early in the morning and our boiler turns to 40 degrees, so it's happily circling that water. And then we need to boost the hot water in the tank because maybe we have some guests. So we'll start calling for hot water as well. What happens now is the boiler increases its flow temperature to 70, opens the zone valve for the coil, but the zone valve for the heating has also stayed open. So we're now circulating the water at 70 degrees around the whole house. Not only is this delivering more heat into the house than is needed, it'll also take the hot water longer to heat up because a lot of that heat will be diverted around and will be going into the bedrooms rather than the cylinder where I want it. Now obviously I'm not the first person to experience this problem and I reached out to Richard just to ask him for some more information and he proposed sort of two solutions to this problem that are quite common. So the first one is where you can rewire the zone valves so that one valve will essentially close the other valve just using their switched lives. Another alternative is to use uh, some relays. So again, when one valve opens, it will automatically close the other valve. So you end up in a situation where you will never have the heating valve open at the same time as the hot water valve, and that will ensure that the water is always flowing to where it's needed. The key here is that it's priority domestic hot water. So if the heating is on and a call for, heat or a call for hot water comes in, it will shut the heating valve uh, and divert all the boiler's energy into the hot water. And once it's done and it closes the hot water valve, it'll then resume uh, sending that heat into the radiators. As I'm a software guy and I wasn't confident enough to have a go at rewiring my zone valves, I looked for a software-based solution for this. Back in September 2023, I removed my Tado thermostat completely and I replaced it with a custom setup that uses a couple of Shelly One relays to control the valves and I connected them up to a thermostat in Home Assistant. So I was already in a very good place in terms of being able to control the valves individually. So that was the first step in kind of managing the valves to make sure that uh, one closed when the other one opened. I do all my automations using Node-RED because I like the interface and it just allows me to kind of visualize what's going on a lot easier. I'm going to take you through my kind of software based solution now or my automation based solution and it'll be a mix of Home Assistant and Node-RED. So to start the run through, I'm going to hop into Home Assistant as that's where um, I kind of started. 
So to begin with, I added two helpers, uh, one for turning on the radiators and one for turning on the underfloor heating. And they're represented there, so they're just Boolean inputs that you set to true or you set to false. So they represent the state of the heating. You know, if I want the, uh, the radiators on, I set this one to true. If I want the underfloor heating on, I will set this one to true. Now, these switches don't connect to anything as such. They are the sort of virtual switches within Home Assistant. So in addition to the two virtual switches, one of the new features that got added in the latest release of Home Assistant was a new entity called <coughs> a valve. Now, a valve is a valve, so it represents a valve being in an open or closed position, and it's connected to a switch under the covers, a home assistant switch. When I set this up originally, I just had two Shelly switches and they represented the, the, the valve, so the, whole, the underfloor heating valve and the radiator valve. When I upgraded to the latest version of home assistant, I switched them over to valves. And what they've done is they've created two sort of helper uh, entities that represent the valves and behind them, hidden from me, are the two switches. So when I open the radiator heating valve, that behind the covers toggles the Shelly one relay connected to that valve. And then that will open and then and close it is the same. And the same goes for the underfloor heating. So I now have essentially got a separation between the heating being on and the valve being open. Uh, for the underfloor heating or the radiators. Now whilst the two valve entities actually do something, they're connected to switches, the two heating helpers that I've created don't do anything by themselves. So to bring them to life, I've created two automations in Node-RED. So I'll jump into Node-RED now, and here they are. So I've got two state change uh, hooks, or two state change nodes. And what they're doing is they're listening for <clears throat> they're listening for the switches for the radiator heating and the underfloor heating. Now what they will do when they're turned on is they will typically open the valve. So they'll engage the valve, which will then engage the boiler <clears throat> and start the water flowing around. Same for the underfloor heating, it's the same process. But where I've got to be careful is when heating is on. So if you remember from the diagram, if the hot water is currently on, we do not want to open the heating valve. So even if there is a call for heat coming from the thermostat, in this case a home assistant thermostat, I don't want to open the valve whilst the hot water valve is open. So if there's a request for heating whilst the hot water is currently on, the automation will simply check that. So when there's a call for radiator heating, the node red will check if there's a call for hot water and if there is, it will do nothing. Same goes for the underfloor heating. If we want to turn the underfloor heating on, it will check to see if the mixer G is looking for hot water and if it is, it doesn't do anything. That sort of solves that problem. So if the mixer G is calling for uh, hot water, the radiator valves and the underfloor heating valves won't open. But what happens in a situation where my heat is on and we boost the hot water, we then want to close the, uh, the valves here. But when I stop calling for hot water, I want the radiators to turn back on. Now to accomplish this with the automation, it's a slightly different approach. So I'm not controlling the hot water zone valve directly. That's managed by my Mixergy tank. So when the Mixergy tank wants to heat itself up, it will open the valve, which then sends a call to the boiler. Now, in order that I can know when there's a call for hot water, I've added a Shelly I3 <clears throat> into the wiring center for the heating, and that's connected to that call for hot water. So when that gets detected, uh, it sends this signal here. So this node will pick up that there's a call for hot water. And what it will simply do is it will just close 
the radiator zone valve and the underflow heating zone valve if they're open. So it'll just send, uh, it'll call the closed valve service on those two, uh, on those two valves there and they'll close. If they're already closed, it doesn't matter. But if they're open because the heating is on, it will just close those valves. And then we'll end up where we'll start calling for water and that valve will remain closed. Now, when the call for hot water finishes, if the heating was already on, we need to make sure that we turn the heating, that we open the zone valves and turn the heating back on. So this is where my little virtual switches come into play. So if they're set to true for either one, so either the radiator heating or the underflow heating, it'll then simply open the valve. So that means that when a call for hot water uh, finishes or is withdrawn, I don't know what the terminology for that is, it will check to see if the thermostat wants the radiators on or if the thermostat wants the underflow heating on. And if it does, it'll just open those valves again. So it'll essentially remember what way the heating was before. Similar to the way the radiators work, they will not open the valve if there is a call for hot water. The hot water valve will actually close the heating valves if they're open, but it will remember to reopen them once it's done. And that, in a nutshell, is how my priority domestic hot water setup works with my existing S-Plan system. Now, I've had this in place for, yeah, quite a few months now, and it's worked. You know, the, this is the, the first winter where it's been tried, uh, tried in earnest, and it's worked flawlessly, so I, I couldn't be happier with how this has panned out. Obviously, there is an element of software reliance when you're toggling these valves open and closed. But in reality, if the system, if this, these automations went a bit wonky, it doesn't re it's not the end of the world if all the valves open. It just means that the boiler is going to fire up to 70 or 75 and just start circulating that water around everywhere. Now, my underflow heating has a mix of valve on there at, the, at present, so that's not a big problem. Uh, the, the, the water and the underflow heating will never go above 45 and for the radiators it doesn't matter it just means the rooms will get warmer quicker probably get too warm uh, too quick I am planning on removing that mixer valve at some point in the future and probably removing the, the circulating pump as part of the underflow heating manifold just because the system is is terribly imbalanced because of that pump so once I do that I'll have to be very cautious about how we approach this from a sort of safety point of view because I do not want 70 degree war going into my underfloor heating so at that point um, it may be essential to rewire the valves just to give me that sort of hardwired reliability uh, or maybe it's possible to keep the mixer valve in place and just remove the circulating pump so that that's something I'll have to a bridge I'll have to cross when I come to it. So I will wrap up there. Uh, I think that's enough for that video. Hopefully this has been uh, interesting. You hopefully have learned a little bit maybe about weather compensation and how Priority Domestic Hot Water can unlock that for you. As ever, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. If you're running a weather compensation or you've got a priority domestic hot water setup, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to just know a bit more detail about how your system is set up and how it behaves. And otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.